My name is Jim Mars, and I am a journalist, author from Texas. Uh, my background is in uh, the newspaper as a newspaper reporter, and I've owned my own newspapers. I've also taught a course on the Kennedy assassination at the University of Texas at Arlington since 1976. And as a result, I became aware of the not only the possibility, but the reality of high-level political conspiracies, if you will. I live in rural Texas, which is a pretty conservative and pretty much bush country, and they're strangely quiet about all this. I think they're very disquieted about what's going on, but they don't really know what to do about it. And I try to explain to them, this is why Gore could not be allowed to take the White House. This is why they had to get the Supreme Court to place George Bush in the White House. Because if Gore had gotten in, uh, the very same things would have happened. We would have had 9-11, we would have invaded Afghanistan, we would have invaded Iraq, because that was part of the plan, okay? The difference would have been that as a perceived liberal Democrat, that right-wing, conservative, uh, uh, Republican bunch would have raised hell about his stripping of the Constitution and about his adventurism around the world. But with Bush in office, it kept him muted. Uh, and I've heard many of them say, I, I don't really quite agree with what's going on, but they can't bring themselves to get up and raise cane about it because he's their guy, or at least that's the perception. Is that something to do with his ability to manipulate the Christian uh, uh, grouping? His, his widespread, and again, I live in the Bible Belt, and his widespread support down there in the Bible Belt is just beyond me. It is the absolute apex of hypocrisy because the very people who claim that he's such a great Christian man are allowing him to get away with the most unchristian things that I've ever seen. Everybody at this conference pretty much understands the facts that, yes, there was foreknowledge. Yes, we were not warned. No, we were not. It was not prevented. Uh, the standard operating and, and security measures were, were butchered that day. They were shredded, stripped away. All right? Uh, airplanes that should have been in the air weren't in the air. Uh, the stringent security at airports was apparently not in effect. Uh, we, it's never been explained how all of these Arab hijackers managed to get on all these different airlines and hijack them at the same time and why there was no immediate response. It fit perfectly with plans that had begun to be formulated even in the previous Bush administration, which calls for an invasion of Afghanistan, for an invasion of Iraq, for a regime change, for uh, gaining control over the oil in the, that region. All that was laid down. And uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski, former Secretary of State to Jimmy Carter and uh, head of the Secretive Trilateral Commission, wrote a book called The Great Game in which he said that to accomplish all this would require another Pearl Harbor type attack. Well, I think we saw that on 9-11. Um, and so it's obvious that they were following a preordained game plan. Now, once that happened and once you understand that, you can see the tracks of foreknowledge. Everybody from the FBI to the CIA to the uh, Russians, China, uh, even the Taliban tried to warn us of what was going to happen. And the idea that they had no idea that they would seize airliners and fly them into buildings is simply a lie because in the mid-90s in the Philippines, they busted an al-Qaeda cell. They found the plans to Operation Pajinka, which called for hijacking airliners and flying them into prominent buildings, including the World Trade Center. Unless we, unless we forget, they had actually already bombed the World Trade Center in 1993, and then court was unrepentant and pledged that, well, we didn't do so well this time, but we'll do better next time. Any, anybody with half the brain one eye could have figured out that uh, this is exactly what was going to happen. And I think the strongest case is, is that when you discover that people within Congress, that Attorney General John Ashcroft, that officials within the Pentagon, in August of 2001, just a week or two before the terrible events of 9-11, all said that they were not going to fly commercial airliners, they would only fly government uh, chartered airplanes. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. Why didn't you tell the rest of us? The evidence of foreknowledge, the evidence of manipulation that's taken place in there, the uh, reality versus the little happy stories that we were told 
for example, the story they put out about finding Muhammad Atta's past paper passport intact on Street New York when we're told that the black boxes that are designed to withstand air crashes didn't survive. I mean, how ridiculous can you be? And you know what? You talk about the, the left, the progressives. They've done the same thing with the Kennedy assassination. They tend to brush it off by saying, oh, well, he was a rich man's son, and we don't want to pay attention to that. Well, if you don't understand who was behind the Kennedy assassination, you're not going to be able to understand who was behind 9-11 because it's the same cast of characters and the same forces. And so 9-11, I think, obviously, since that is the underlying cause celebre of everything else that's going on, the Patriot Act, Homeland Security, the stripping of the Constitution, invasions of Afghanistan, Iraq, and future invasions of Iran, Saudi Arabia, who knows what, all of that goes back to 9-11. And if 9-11 was not on the level, then none of the uh, preceding events are going to be on the level. So I think you have to start with the initial impetus. I think the idea of peak oil, the, fact, the idea that we're running out of oil, I think that's being used quite effectively uh, on people of knowledge that this is the reason we need to do all this. I think it's even being used effectively on a subconscious basis with the American public who, even if they don't think about it consciously, they kind of realize this is about oil and I don't want to have to pay 3 and $4 a gallon and I want to run my SUV. So it's like whatever happens over there is okay as long as it's not happening here in the U.S. But again... It's a false issue. What we should be doing is turning to alternative sources of energy. With just a little bit of tweaking to the carburetors in every modern car, we could be running on liquid hydrogen, which you can get by cracking water, you know, hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and it's non-polluting, and it's plentiful, but then that's the problem. They can't get a monopoly over it. Actually, I had all this by mid-2002, had a contract with Harper Collins in New York, and was ready to publish a book called The War on Freedom uh, that would outline everything that we've been talking about, plus give all the details, thoroughly sourced, and even passed the legal review, and then suddenly they just canceled it, but then paid me all the advance money. It was like, here, take your money and go away because they did not want to publish this. And I've been uh, trying to get this information out ever since then. And now I have revised it, I've updated it, and it is coming out. And uh, if you give you some idea of what the major thesis is, the title will be Inside Job. I'll be publishing in conjunction with Origin Press here in, uh, on the West Coast. Unfortunately, uh, of course, you have your great unwashed masses who don't really think at all. They just uh, they just believe whatever CNN or Fox News tells them. But among the people who are thinking, it's really kind of tragic to me how splintered they become and how distracted they become because they're led off into Marxist Trotskyist ideas or or liberal ideas or you know they push on social issues and they they push on gender issues they push on racial issues and all in the world that does is keep us divided and conquered what we need to do is all agree on certain basic fundamentals like adhering to the constitution of of the United States and the Bill of Rights. We, in other words, we all need to agree to disagree. And it's the same thing I noticed here at this 9-11 conference. Um, instead of presenting a united front to the outside world and saying, look, this was an inside job, this is a sham, we need to rethink our whole idea about 9-11, who was really behind it, and therefore rethink what we're doing in response to it. Instead, they all end up fighting with each other over what, if anything, hit the Pentagon. How, what are the temperatures of the fires that burn the metal that caused the World Trade Center to collapse? And these are all valid issues, but they should be worked out behind closed doors and among people who have, have actually studied the, the details. They should be bringing in people who actually know what they're talking about, engineers, structural engineers, metallurgists, etc. What we should be presenting to the general population is a united front saying, listen, folks, we've been bamboozled, and we need to rethink this whole thing. Short of a, another major terrorist attack, which could stampede everyone into voting for Bush, what I see happening is, is that Kerry, who is a cousin to Bush, and another skull and bonesman, okay, and of the same stripe, will would would take office if he takes office everything will continue as it is we will see some lessening of the domestic uh things to the point where people say oh well thank goodness we got rid of that terrible old bush and then they all go back go back to sleep i think it's a, a total mistake not to focus on 911